today's webinar. So before we get started, since we are talking about moving more to lose more, I want everybody to stand up and walk in place during this webinar. Uh, wherever you're at, just go ahead and take a minute to do that. All right, so I usually like to get started with a quick brain tease just to get everybody thinking about the subject at hand and what we're gonna be talking about. So the first question is, to get the health benefits of exercise, you must exercise continuously for at least 30 minutes per day. Do you think that's true or false? So that's actually false. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I don't have the time to exercise, I don't have an hour or two hours, so I'm just not going to do it. Um, but the fact is that you can actually spread out your exercise throughout the day. So if you wanna do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, and 10 in the evening, that's completely fine. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. The second question is, one of the most common barriers to exercise is lack of motivation. Do you think that's true or false? So that's actually false. It's not a lack of motivation or being lazy necessarily, but it's just being busy. So a lot of people are busier than ever with work, kids, family obligations, party obligations, whatever it may be, but they have a lot going on and so do you. So a lot of times we think, oh, we're just lazy, but it's just making exercise or physical activity a priority that makes the difference. So this is how society defines physical fitness, and a lot of you have seen this in commercials, magazines, billboards while you're driving down, um, you know, to go to LA, things like that, but this is actually not what physical fitness really is. This is just an image of individuals who are uh, quote unquote physically fit because they have abs or they have strong biceps and triceps, things like that. But physical fitness is actually being able to accomplish your daily activities without losing your breath, um, being able to take in your groceries from your car, picking up your kids, your grandchildren, just basically having a better quality of life and being disease free. So that's really what physical fitness is and being physically fit is just having that capability. So I really want you guys to focus on the right things. I don't want you get a, to get caught up on what society tells us we should look like or how we should, how, what physical fitness is, but I want you to focus on feeling bit, uh, better, um, more physically fit, uh, set realistic goals for yourself. So if you don't have time to do an hour a day, you can always do 15 or 20 minutes of physical activity. Um, also, don't see, set realistic, unrealistic goals about losing weight. So if you think that losing 20, 30, 40 pounds per week is realistic, that's actually very unrealistic. So making sure that you, you set your sights on realistic goals. Also enjoying the journey to physical fitness. So if you fall off the bandwagon here or there, it's you can always come back on. Um, if one week you're just too busy to be able to do anything, that's completely fine. But the following week, just start exercising again. Don't make it a habit to quit exercise. For diabetes specifically, exercise is very important and is highly recommended for individuals with either type 1, type 2, or gestational diabetes. Um, it can help to lower your blood sugars and also improve insulin resistance. So make sure that you warm up before you exercise, at least a five-minute warm-up, just to get your, your blood going, your muscles warmed up. That way you don't have any strains or um, stretch anything out too far. Also check your blood sugar before you exercise to see where you're at. If it's especially elevated, exercise can definitely bring it down. So if you've had dinner and you had something that um, caused you to have high blood sugar, then you can always um, you can always exercise and that will bring your blood sugar down. And then after you exercise, you wanna do a five minute cool down just to get your, um, your heart rate down and your breath down and so that you can go into a more relaxed state. And then check your blood sugar again to see if it actually came down after your physical activity. There's also a bonus to being to being physically active. It's not just about lowering your blood sugar or improving your insulin resistance, but it also can ha help you to live longer. So it can increase your lifespan by 4.5 years, which for me, I'd love to live an extra 4.5 years to be able to get out and do more traveling, sightseeing with my husband. So I'm sure for your, you guys as well, this would be interesting. So if physical activity is good for us, why aren't we all doing it? I want you guys to take just about a minute or two to think about this and write down some barriers to exercise that you have. And then think of some ways that you can overcome those barriers. So I'll give you just a minute to do that. 
So for myself, for example, a barrier that I used to have was I would go home <clears throat> and I would sit down and I would tell myself, okay, at 6.30, I'll get back up and go to the gym. Well, what ended up happening is I would get distracted and maybe I'd start cleaning or doing the dishes, I'm making dinner, and then I'd get too um, comfortable at home and I would never leave to go back to the gym. So now instead, I will actually bring my workout clothes to work with me. I'll change and then I'll go directly to the gym, do a class there or meet up with a friend that I uh, uh, told that I would meet up for class with and then I'll go home after that. So that's helped me to overcome that barrier of going home and getting comfortable in my loungewear. So that was one barrier that I overcame by bring, taking my clothes to work. So I want you guys to think of some barriers that you have in your life and then some ways that you can overcome those barriers. Okay, so you can always finish that list later, but I wanted you to start thinking about what those barriers might be because really that is the key to starting to become more physically active is knowing what's prohibiting you from doing it in the first place and then coming up with some tactics that you can overcome those barriers with. So keep that list going and uh, continue to write it after we're done with this presentation. All right. So the first thing in uh, becoming more physically active is thinking like an exerciser. For many of us, we think, okay, I'm just not an exerciser. I don't like sweating. I don't like going to the gym. I don't like going for walks. It's too hot outside. So you're already setting yourself up for disaster because you're already in that mindset of I'm not an exerciser. I'm not somebody who's physically active. But we all have the capability to move more. Um, even if we have some pain here and there, we can always walk even for five or 10 minutes, and that in and of itself is exercising. You don't have to run a marathon to be considered an exerciser. So make sure that you look for opportunities and not excuses. We can definitely build up excuses in our head for why we don't wanna do activity, um, but make sure that you make it a priority. That's number one key, is that it become a priority in your life. A lot of people say they're unmotivated or they're lazy, but it's actually just because you haven't made it a priority. So make sure that you look at your schedule and try Try to plan ahead. Fit it into your schedule wherever you have a little bit of time. Make sure that you make everything count. So park far away from um, the grocery store. That way you, can, you have to walk more or take the stairs. Think of ways that you can incorporate more steps into your day. Um, you can also take uh, your dog for a walk as well. So that's also making every step count. Make sure that you also use uh, viewed as a necessity rather than an indulgence. So it gives us energy, it makes us feel better, we get endorphins going. I know that when I'm having a especially stressful day, whenever I go and exercise, I actually feel a whole lot better afterwards. Even though I'm thinking, oh, I don't wanna do this, I'd rather go home and sit and watch some TV, maybe enjoy a nice dinner or a glass of wine, I'll actually still push myself to go. And in the end, I have those endorphins going, I feel much better and more clear-headed. So try and view the end result rather than thinking of how much pain it's going to be to get there. Also try to move all day long. Wearing a pedometer is a great way to see if you're actually uh, taking more steps. So if you wanna buy yourself an inexpensive Fitbit or maybe ask for, for one for Christmas or a birthday or a gift or something like that, wearing that can definitely help you to increase your steps. And then also looking at it as stress management. As I mentioned earlier, um, it does help me a lot with my stress and I know that Many other people have said that about yoga as well and things that are mindful exercises that help to reduce the amount of stress you have in your life. So how much fitness do I actually need? Uh, for most individuals, you need about 150 minutes of moderate intense activity per week. So depending on your goals and if you're trying to maybe run a marathon, you'd want to do more than that. But for most ev uh, everybody else, 150 minutes is appropriate. So about 30 to 60 minutes of moderate intensity activity 
five days per week is what's necessary. Or you can do more vigorous intense activity where you're having to breathe a lot harder, you're sweating a lot more, like doing sprints, um, jogging a lot faster, jump roping for several minutes, things like that are considered more in uh, vigorous intense activity. You can do that for 20 to 60 minutes, three days per week. So you'll have to do less when you do more vigorous intensity as opposed to moderate intensity exercises. And also remember that you don't have to do continuous, uh, you know, a continuous one hour. You can break up your session 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes in the evening. So here are some moderate intense activities. You can walk briskly. You don't have to walk around the block. I have a lot of patients tell me that it's too hot outside, and I totally understand that. So if it's too hot, you can always choose to walk early in the morning or uh, later in the evening. So schedule that into your time, or you can walk in place inside your home. So maybe you have a favorite show you love to watch, and you can walk in place while you're watching your show. Light yard work is also moderate intense activity. You'll definitely feel it in your hamstrings when you're uh, kneeling over as well as having to use your core. So definitely keep your core tight when you are doing uh, yard work because you can hurt your back if, you don't, if you're not careful. Uh, you can do biking as well. Tennis, dancing is great. I love Zumba. Oftentimes I'll put on Zumba um, on YouTube at my house, so you can do that as well. Uh, you can climb stairs, as I mentioned earlier. If you're at work, you can take the stairs on your break or at lunchtime. And then some hiking. We have wonderful places to hike all over California. So maybe on, a, on the weekend, you can go to Mount Rubido or somewhere close by where you can do some hiking. The key is to make it fun. You don't want to pick something that you feel is dreadful or you don't want to keep doing. So if you love kickboxing, take, take up a kickboxing class. All right, so now we're going to talk about resistance training. So resistance training is really important to help build stronger bones as well as lower blood pressure. It can definitely help you with your diabetes and improving your insulin resistance by managing your weight, um, and it improves your quality of life. So it'll help you to uh, take in those groceries, as I mentioned earlier, pick up the kids, pick up your grandchildren, um, things that you need to do uh, that require muscle. And it also helps to improve your balance, which is really important later in life um, as we lose our balance. This uh, link right here will show you different moves that you can do for different body parts. So if you use this link and put it into your browser, you can find different workouts for your biceps, your triceps, your shoulders, your quads, and your hamstrings. So they'll show you actual videos on how to work out those different body parts. All right, so this is um, two easy workouts that you can do for your biceps. So you can either use a resistance band, as you see on the left-hand side, or you can use dumbbells, which you see on the right-hand side. If you don't have either of these, you can always go to Walmart. They have really inexpensive ones there. Or you can even use uh, makeshift items that you make at home by using like uh, cans, or you can use heavy water bottles, things like that, that have weight in them. You can also use rice bags. I've done that before, and I've thrown them into a smaller cooler bag to use as a weight. So what you want to do for your biceps is you'll do 15 to 20 reps, and then two to three sets. So reps would be doing going all the way down, and then you come all the way back up, and that's one rep. And then you'd want to do about 15 of those, take a small break, and then do another set. So do as much as you can with the, with the weight that is appropriate for you and your body type. Uh, so you might want to play around with different weights, maybe do two pounds, five pounds, eight pounds, see what works best for you, but you always want to be progressing. So if you find that five pounds becomes really easy over time, then you want to go ahead and go up to eight pounds or 10 pounds to make sure that you keep progressing um, in increasing those muscles. So this is a really easy exercise to do. Again, you can make weights at home with things that you already have. This is a tricep move, and there's two different types that you can use or that you can do. The first one you can do at home with a chair that's in place, so you don't want to do anything that has um, is a rolling chair or will move around because you'll end up falling. So make sure that it's something that's stationary, like a bench or a stable chair. And what you want to do is keep your elbows close to your body and then go all the way down. What makes this move a little bit easier is by having your knees at a 90-degree angle. So as you can see, the female in the photo, she actually has her legs fully extended. So if you actually bring your knees closer to your body, it will become a lot easier for you. So that's how most of us will probably start out. And as you get your strength up, you can actually extend your legs even further. So that's a great move for your triceps. It's awesome for women. I know that we're always trying to get our triceps more 
more toned. Uh, the other one on the right hand side is by using a dumbbell. Again, you can use uh, you know, a bag of rice or a can and you'll want to keep your elbows close to your head and then you'll just extend your arms ab up above your head. So those are two easy tricep moves that are great for you. This move right here is for your chest, and so it's a dumbbell press. Um, you can, again, use, if you're at the gym, you can use a bar, and then you'll maybe put, you know, 2.5 pounds on each end, or you can do 5 pounds on each end, or if you want, you can buy some dumbbells for your home, but you're just basically pushing the dumbbells up above your chest and then bringing them back down. So that's one rep, and then you continue until you do 10 to 15 reps, or two to three sets. So each one of these slides um, has the amount of reps you should do as well as the sets. So I would encourage you to definitely print this out and have it handy so you can do these workouts at home. You can even do some of them at work. Um, or if you're on a trip, you can take these your dumbbells with you and do them at, in a hotel room as well. This is an awesome exercise because both of these you can do anywhere, anytime. Um, there really is no excuse that I don't have dumbbells or I don't have resistant bands. This is a, a body workout. So you just, um, for the push-ups, you want to keep your hands, you can do different variations of a push-up. The one that you see right here is called a triangle push-up. And if you want, you can actually uh, spread your hands out further so that they're right beneath your shoulders and then go all the way down leading with your chest and then push yourself all the way back up. So push-ups are relatively difficult. If this is too hard for you to do with your legs fully extended, you can always bend them um, so that you're kneeling on the ground and then you can do that type of push-up. Hopefully as you progress with your push-ups, you can maybe do one or two with your legs fully extended and then continue to do them on your knees. But if you wanna do a little challenge with yourself, you can always try and do um, so, you know, 10 push-ups one week and the following week uh, build up to 15 push-ups and the following week 20 push-ups until you do a total of 100 push-ups in a month. This is a great back exercise, and it's important that we really strengthen our backs because for many of us, they are relatively weak, and so we do have a lot of back pain from that, from sitting too long or using our back inappropriately. So make sure that you do your back exercises. An easy one is called the Superman, so it looks just like a Superman when you're laying on your belly. You just wanna lift up your legs and your arms at the same time, and this doesn't look that difficult when you're looking at it on a slide, but it is pretty difficult when you're on the floor doing it. So again, due to do 10 to 15 reps and then two to three sets of those. If you have a dumbbell, you can use a bench, you can use a chair, you can even use your couch, which I've done before, and then you'll just follow the format that you see at the bottom that the gentleman's doing. You just pull your arm up um, so that your arm is at a 90 degree angle and then you extend it again to the floor. Abdominal crunches are not overrated. They're excellent to do, and I know we did them in grade school, but try to do them now as well. So we have three different types that you can do here. You can do just a regular crunch with your knees at a 90 degree angle, and you can do them for about 30 seconds to a minute, or you can do a roll up where you try to touch your feet. The key here with either of these exercises is that you try not to pull up with your neck because it can cause neck strain. So a trick that I like to use is I act like there's an orange beneath my chin and I look up at the ceiling. So that way I'm never leading with my neck and I'm trying to instead contract my abs. Um, the third picture is a plank. So that's a great a full body workout again. So if you want to hold yourself in a plank position, this will work out your legs, your abs, um, your glutes, your triceps, everything. So that will really help you to feel all fired up and within 30 seconds to a minute, you'll want to lay back down. Some quadricep and hamstring um, exercises are shown here. So the trick with the um, squats is that you wanna lead with your glutes. So you wanna act like you're sitting down in a chair and then push back up. So having your weight in your heels is really important. Trying not to have your weight in your toes is what you don't wanna do. So if you feel that you're um, leading with your toes and all your weight is in your toes, and you're able to see them, then you're not, you know you're not doing your squat correctly. So make sure that your, your weight is always in your heels and that you're 
tiptoes are slightly lifted so that you're doing your squat properly. So you want to do about 20 of those, and then you can do two to three sets or however many you can do at the time. Lunges are excellent. They definitely hurt, but they're great for your glutes and your hamstring, hamstrings and your quads. So what you can do with those is you can step forward into a lunge. You can um, stay in a lunge position and go up and down. It's really up to you whatever variation you want to use. If you need videos for either of these, you can go on YouTube, and they have tons of videos that you can use to show you proper form and different ways you can do squats and lunges. So I want you guys to do a personal squat when we're done, uh, personal squat challenge when we're done with the presentation. Um, I want you to put yourself up against the wall and get into a squat position and hold it for about a minute. So once we're done with the presentation and you've logged off, I want you to do that personal squat challenge. This is a great calf exercise. You can use dumbbells, or you don't have to, but it just adds a little bit more resistance. But just get on your tippy toes and do 15 to 20 reps and two to three sets. You can also do those uh, in a jumping format. So if you jump up, you'll notice that that will start to burn your calves. And we'll quickly go through some modified exercises for people who aren't able to get on the floor or who have a difficult time with heavy weights. So um, this one is for your shoulders. Again, you can use um, some cans of soup or uh, bags of beans or rice, but you just wanna push your arms up above your head and this will definitely work out your shoulders. You can do wall push-ups. I always recommend these to my patients who can't get on the floor. They're very easy, and you just follow the reps and sets that you see at the bottom. This is great for your shoulders, your chest, and your arms. So if you ever need to put anything, anything heavy above your head, like if you're in an airplane, you want to put your suitcase in the overhead bin, this is a great exercise to help strengthen those muscles. This is an easy back leg raise. You can use a chair for stability. So again, for individuals who have issues with balance, this is awesome. You just wanna make sure that you keep your leg at an angle, um, a slight angle, and then you just uh, lift it up and down to do reps of 10 to 15 and a set of one or two. This is a um, great exercise for your quads and your hamstrings. So if you have issues doing squats or lunges, this is an alternative for you. And all you wanna do is lift your leg up and down. You can do both at the same time if you don't have issues with your back, but if you do, you wanna always make sure that you keep one of your feet on the floor. And this is a good exercise for individuals who can't do ab exercises on the floor. You can use a chair instead. So just holding yourself erect without using the backrest of the chair will help to strengthen your core and your abs. So you wanna hold that for about a minute. If you can't make it to a minute, just do 30 seconds to start. All right, so I've given you all these exercises and they will target all your muscle groups, your shoulders, your chest, your abs, your legs. Uh, so if you do those, you can always print out this handout. And you can do them at home. Uh, but I encourage you to make sure you keep a journal, write down all the exercises you're doing with the weights that you're using or the type of resistant band you're using, and that each week you increase it somehow. So maybe the minutes that you do of cardiovascular exercise or the amounts of reps that you do, just make sure that you're always progressing in the right direction. All right, I'm gonna do a quick exercise with you as you visualize the new you. So visualizing um, how you're gonna feel after you become more physically fit is really important. So I want everybody to close their eyes right now and I'll just do this quick meditation exercise with you. So I want you to visualize yourself having more breath as you walk up and down stairs. Visualize how it will feel to walk into your house carrying bags and not feeling tired afterwards. I want you to visualize yourself having more energy to do different tasks throughout the day as you become stronger. I want you to visualize how you feel when your friends begin to compliment you on your new appearance. And I want you to imagine how you feel when your blood sugars begin to become more under control. Visualize yourself feeling healthier and looking more vibrant. So anytime you're feeling like you don't want to exercise, you don't want to do a lot of movement, you're tired, you're unmotivated, I want you to visualize yourself becoming healthier and your blood sugars becoming more stable uh, because that really can help to push you in the right direction. So in conclusion, make sure that you um, do your physical activity because it can really improve your insulin resistance when you do manage your weight. I want you to engage in 150 minutes of moderate intense activity per week, so that's about 30 minutes per day, every day. And I want you to work on all your major muscle groups with the pictures I've shown you um, in this handout or this presentation. 
And then make sure that you start with small goals and work your way up. So if you can't do 30 minutes a day right now, just go ahead and start with 10 or 15 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. And then just do one day a week of strength training where you target all your major muscle groups.